Hey guys, in this episode, I'm going to talk about how you can deploy your Blazor server application to iOS. Deploying Blazor server application to iOS is just like deploying any other ASP.NET Core application to iOS. I have listed down the steps which work for me, so we'll follow these steps today and see if we can deploy our book source application that we, we have been working on to iOS. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about how the HTTP requests are handled in iOS for this ASP.NET Core application. And then I'm gonna talk about how you can scale up your Blazor server application as the connection between client and server is maintained by signal or connection. So let's jump into the steps first and see if we can deploy our bookstores application to iOS. And then I'm gonna talk about the other things. So uh, to make sure that iOS is installed in your machine, um, you need to go to your option features. I'm going to type in option features, uh, which will open up the window uh, and that will list down all the features which are installed on your machine. So here you need to make sure that internet, uh, internet information services are installed, especially the part where, you know, IS management console and worldwide web services are installed on your machine. Okay. You'll have to restart your machine if this is not installed. It's installed on my machine, so I'm gonna move on. To check if the IS is working or not, you can type in IS on your startup window and it will open up information, uh, internet information services if IS is installed on your machine. I'm gonna open this up and um, go to the default website, which is uh, which is like the default website everyone gets after installing iOS on their machine. And you can see that it is hosted on port 80. So if I click on this browse, it will open up, it will open up Chrome and it will open up the iOS's default page on my browser. So this is where we would like to deploy our Blazor server application, right? So iOS is installed on our machine. The next step is to make sure that HP.NET Core runtime module is installed on our machine or not, right? I'm gonna send you this link. I'm gonna put this link in the video description. This link is to uh, download Windows hosting bundle installer. The reason why I'm installing is this, uh, this installer because it contains .NET Core runtime and HP.NET Core runtime. And once you install this bundle, then, I'll, then it adds ASP.NET Core IS model to your IS if IS is installed on your machine, right? So let's go ahead and install this, download this first, and then save it. And then I'm gonna install this. I'm gonna agree to the terms and condition and install and you can see that it's installing runtime 3.1 and 32 bit version and the 64 bit version and the module on my machine okay so once that is installed you can make sure that is installed or not by going to your modules here in iOS so if i open this up you can see that asp.net core module version 2 is installed on my machine sweet the next step the next step is to publish the folder, publish the project to the folder. So let's go to our, our application. This is our Blazor server application, bookstores application. I'm gonna run this and show you how it exactly works. And then we'll, you know, publish this project to, um, uh, to a folder. So I'm gonna uh, press control F5, which will open up our bookstores application, which looks something like this. It will authorize and then we'll go to, there are some pages that I've made for, um, you know, for teaching the fundamentals of Blazor. And then we want to deploy this application to a IS server. So to do that, first thing that you should do is to create the folder, the create, create folder where you would like to deploy your application. Um, so I'm going to go to my solution folder here and go to bookstores repo and I've already created this publish folder here. I'm going to create a new folder for my front end and I'm going to type save bookstores. And this is where I would like to publish my Blazor server application. 
Uh, then I'm going to go to my project and then click on publish. This will list down all the targets where you can publish or place your application. There's Azure, Docker, um, Folder, FT, uh, FTP server, you know, web server. There's so many options here. We're going to select folder option and then click on next. This will list down the uh, the default folder where you can deploy, uh, where you can publish your application. This is the part of uh, the project, but this is not where you would like to publish your application. We have already created a folder in which we would like to uh, deploy our application. So I'm going to go to that folder, repos, bookstores, publish, and bookstores. And here I'm going to click on finish. This will create the profile where we can, um, uh, you know, keep on publishing every time we make changes into a server application. We can, uh, you know, publish uh, the changes to the folder so that IIS gets updated. So this profile is created. I'm going to click on publish and this will build my application in release mode and then create the assemblies and it will deploy uh, my application to that folder. Sweet. So you can see that, you know, build succeeded and publish succeeded. So if I click on this uh, link, I can, I can see that I can see all my assemblies and all the DLLs have been deployed on my, on my folder that we created, right? So that is done. The next thing that we need to do, we need to change the port of our default website to 90. What's happening here is our when we installed our, um, our IIS, it has a default website which is already using port 80. And I don't want my default website to use this port 80. Instead of that, I would, I wanna, um, I want my bookstores application to use port 80 so that everyone can use it, right? So I'm gonna go to uh, my default website and say edit bindings. And instead of um, 80 port, I'm gonna say that let use port 90 so that I can use, I can create a new website where I can use um, bookstores. I can use port 80 for my bookstores application. So the next step is to create the website on port 80. So I'm going to create add a website and here I'm going to name the website to as bookstores because that makes sense. And then I'm going to go to, um, you know, select the physical path for um, uh, for the website that we are creating. And this path is going to be the, um, the publish folder that we just published. So this is the bookstores folder. I'm going to click on OK and everything should be fine. I'm going to click on OK and that will create bookstores application. Once you create the site, I'm going to refresh. I'm going to restart my eyes. Let's restart the IS, which will, you know, give the effects. And then I'm going to go back to bookstores and click on browse. Once I click on browse, this will open up, um, open up IS, and I'm going to click on localhost again, uh, which should open our bookstores application on IS. This takes a little bit of time in the beginning, and then it opens up just fine. Awesome, right? So this is our application deployed on IIS. Okay, so this is how you deploy your application on IIS. Um, the next thing that I want to discuss is how you how it exactly works. So the requests which are coming in uh, from internet or intranet, they could be either HTTP requests or HTTPS requests. It doesn't really matter. They're handled by IIS. The module that we added in IIS, it handles the requests which are coming from internet for a Blazor application. And then the request is sent to IIS HTTP server, which is part of our ASP.NET Core application. IIS HTTP server is in process server implementation of IIS, which handles this request and it converts the request from native to managed. And it sends the request to HTTP context, inst uh, context instance of our application, which handles the process, which process the request, and then sends the response back to the client who initialized the request. 
So this is how any any server uh, ASP.NET Core application works if it is deployed, especially you know, especially when it's in process application, whenever it's deployed on IaaS. But our application, our Blazor Server application uses a Signal R connection. Blazor Server application use Signal R connection for transactions between client and server. We all know that, right? But so, so the main question comes in our head, which is, you know, how do we scale up and how much memory do we need to handle to make sure that the signal R connection is okay and our server can handle all the concurrent users who are using uh, who are using our application. So to make sure uh, to make sense of this math, let's go back to our um Blazor server that we just deployed. And I'm gonna uh, press F12, which will open up the developers, uh, the developer tools. And I'm gonna go to the ne network tab. And I'm gonna click on refresh, which will list down all the things, all the resources that we need to run our Blazor server application. And one of the resources you can see that there's a WebSocket, which is, um, you know, which is getting opened for processing the request. I'm gonna click on this and which will open this headers, messages, initiator, timing, all the tabs here. And you can see in headers, it's creating a WebSocket to the local host and it's creating you know, ID and everything to connect using SignalR connection. If I go to messages, you can see that, you know, it's sending the messages, these messages to perform the operations, perform, you know, to make the connection between server and client. And you can see the size, the length of these uh, these transactions. If I move between, if I move between the pages, you can see that it's getting changed every time. And these pages are, you know, some kilobytes or bytes, and it keeps on like making um, connection. Even if you're not doing anything, you can see that it's making connection. And they have like three kilobyte of data, and you can see um, you can see some of the transactions here. You can like click on it and see some of the transactions which are happening. So it makes the signal our connection. And by Microsoft documentation, it um, on an average, every message is for every user, the size is 273 kilo, 73 kilobytes. So by that math, you need 1.3 GB of RAM for every 5,000 concurrent users. So that's how you can scale up. That's how you can decide how much memory you should need for your Blazor Server applications. But you know, um, this could get tricky at times, and that's why some people use Azure Signal R connection to handle these concurrent users because it's super easy to handle to scale up your Azure Server application. And that's what we are going to talk about in the next session. We are going to talk about how we can deploy a Blazor Server application as a Azure Web Services and use Azure SignalR connection to handle the request so that our Bookstore's application could be used by anyone in the world, right? If you have any questions, you can reach out to me on Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube. No, not on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Thanks for watching the video. Bye.